In October 1961, amid the fever pitch of the Cold War, physicist Edward Teller, often dubbed the father of the hydrogen bomb, unveiled an idea that teetered on the edge of madness. Project Sundial. Imagine a weapon so powerful it would be like detonating every bomb ever made. All at once, ten times over. This wasn't just another step in the arms race, it was a giant leap into uncharted and terrifying territory. Think about the sun, a colossal nuclear reactor burning at around 15 million degrees Celsius. Now, picture capturing a fragment of that immense energy and unleashing it here on Earth. The final bomb, as it was ominously nicknamed, aimed to release an explosive force of one billion tons of TNT. That's enough to obliterate a landmass the size of a small country in the blink of an eye. If you gathered all the energy from every volcanic eruption in recorded history and set it off in one instant, you'd begin to grasp the destructive potential of Project Sundial. It was a weapon so insanely powerful that even those accustomed to building doomsday devices were left speechless. This is the story of the most colossal weapon you've never heard of, and perhaps it's better that way. The Insane Scale of Sundial to understand how mind-boggling Sundial's power was, let's look at the numbers. Imagine a stack of dynamite 13 times taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza, only that stack would actually represent just a fraction of Sundial's power. Sundial would release so much energy that to match it, you'd need to drop a bomb like Hiroshima's every minute, 24-7, for 15 months. That's 3,000 times more powerful than all the bombs dropped in World War II combined. Its blast radius would be over 200 kilometers, and the fireball alone would be 70 kilometers wide. That's larger than the visible horizon on a flat landscape. Within seconds, the intense heat would incinerate everything within sight. The effects wouldn't stop at the blast site. Sundial would produce a fallout cloud that could spread across continents, contaminating soil, water, and air. The explosion would send a shockwave powerful enough to level buildings hundreds of miles away, and an earthquake that could be felt across the country it would truly be an end-of-the-world weapon. Annihilation at a button's reach Edward Teller didn't envision Sundial as a typical warhead to be dropped over enemy territory. In fact, it didn't need to be sent anywhere. Teller proposed placing it in America's own backyard, perhaps on a remote island or a desert. The threat wasn't just its destructive power, but its existence. The idea was simple. No matter who your enemy was, you could end everything from your own land. Sundial was designed to be the ultimate deterrent. If any country dared to launch an attack, Sundial would ensure that humanity wouldn't survive. It was a button of annihilation, ready to bring about mutually assured destruction, or MAD, in the truest sense. The reasoning was terrifyingly simple. With a weapon this devastating, no one would dare initiate a conflict. In a way, it was the ultimate version of the Cold War's balance of terror. Sundial wasn't about fighting wars. It was about making wars obsolete by guaranteeing total extinction. However, this raised uncomfortable questions. Who would control the weapon? Would leaders be willing to press the button? Could humanity be trusted with this much power? A nuclear winter like no other. Let's imagine what would happen if Sundial was actually detonated. The initial explosion would create a fireball larger than any city, burning with a brightness that would outshine the sun. The air around the fireball would reach temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun itself, turning everything within hundreds of kilometers into ash. The shockwave from the blast would travel outward at incredible speed, flattening mountains, uprooting forests, and demolishing cities. For comparison, the shockwave would be many times stronger than the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. As the dust settled, the entire atmosphere over the explosion would rise, ejecting particles and debris high into the stratosphere. This is where things get even darker. Scientists predict that a sundial explosion would plunge the world into a nuclear winter. The soot and ash would block sunlight, dropping global temperatures by as much as 10 degrees Celsius, enough to cause massive crop failures and food shortages. Rivers and lakes would become contaminated turning drinkable water into a rarity. If you survived the blast, you'd face starvation, freezing temperatures, and toxic air. A single sundial explosion would release more soot than a massive volcanic eruption, creating a dark radioactive winter that could last for years. The global climate would be disrupted, and millions, possibly billions, would die, not just from the initial blast, 
but from the environmental collapse that followed. A terrifying legacy. It didn't take long for people to realize that Sundial was simply too extreme. While the US military was no stranger to terrifying weapons, the idea of Sundial pushed even their limits. Politicians and scientists alike were horrified. They saw Sundial as a point of no return, a machine of pure destruction that could make Earth uninhabitable. But while Sundial itself was shelved, the arms race continued. Even though Sundial was never built, its influence lingered. The fear it represented drove both the US and the Soviet Union to build up nuclear arsenals at an unprecedented rate. At the height of the Cold War, the world had over 60,000 nuclear weapons, enough to destroy every major city on Earth many times over. Today, there are believed to be around 13,000 nuclear weapons in the world, spread across nine countries. Although Sundial was never built, the concept of total annihilation became the backbone of the Cold War's deterrence strategy. Humanity might not have created a single final bomb, but we created a network of weapons that could trigger global extinction. What we have today, the Doomsday Machine. Though Sundial itself is confined to history, its spirit is alive in the form of modern nuclear arsenals. Today's nuclear weapons may not be a single world-ending device, but they are part of what some call a doomsday machine. Thousands of bombs are spread across the globe, hidden in bunkers, loaded on submarines, and ready to launch at any moment. The biggest difference between Sundial and today's arsenal is that our nuclear weapons are spread out and ready to use. This creates an even scarier situation. The likelihood of one of these weapons being used in a moment of crisis is higher. If tensions escalate, a smaller nuclear weapon could be deployed, leading to potential retaliation and a chain reaction that spirals into full-scale nuclear war. Nations argue that these weapons are necessary to maintain peace, but history has shown that the risk of accidents and misunderstandings is dangerously real. The concept of mutually assured destruction remains at the core of nuclear strategy, but it relies on the hope that no one will make a single mistake. Are we ready for peace? As you may understand, Project Sundial was too terrifying to be built. Even the military, always on the hunt for a new edge, saw Sundial as crossing a line that humanity shouldn't cross. But Sundial leaves us with an enduring question. How far are we willing to go in the name of security? Today, with modern nuclear arsenals still in place, the spectre of nuclear annihilation hasn't disappeared. The world's nuclear powers are once again building up their stockpiles, modernizing old warheads, and pouring billions into new weapons. Even after the Cold War, humanity hasn't been able to let go of the idea of ultimate destruction. Maybe the real lesson of Project Sundial is that we, as a species, need to think carefully about the choices we make. Just because we have the power to destroy everything doesn't mean we have to. Sundial is a reminder of the dark path we nearly took and a warning of the dangers that still lie ahead.